stewarded spread. Yes. Uh, over the last week, two phrases have been very present with me. One is, what I re resist persists, and the other is, resist nothing. Can you speak about how to incorporate that into this practice? Resist persists? If you, what, what I resist persists mm -hmm. and resists nothing. Well, it's a simple thing that I teach all the time. Instead of resisting, if you just recognize whatever it is that comes into your life, it's teaching you something about yourself. Understand? Then you won't resist, you will learn. Even from resistance, you can learn. Transform whatever it is into something that is here to teach you about how to grow inside yourself. And then the resistance won't persist. You'll open and embrace what you're learning. And even if things you don't want to hear you know, <laughs> about yourself, they'll be teaching you something important that you need for your life. And that's an incredible way of getting past resistance. Because if you fight with something and you resist something, you're putting energy into it and it will persist. You are feeding it. So it will continue. If you stop feeding it by, all right, what are you teaching? <laughs> what am I learning here about me? I want to listen. The resistance will go away. And you'll learn really profound things about your own life that are necessary for you to grow. And probably the best thing of all is you'll stop fighting with things you don't agree with. I think mostly things we don't agree with are the best teachers. <laughs> because if we stop and listen to them, we got to really break ourselves down. We have to overcome our rightness. We have to overcome that thing in us that refuses to budge. That's right. And the resistance won't persist. You make friends with it. Does that also apply to physical? pain or ailments? Listen to the ailment. Let it teach you about yourself, about a change inside. I mean, I've been, look, I've had a lot of that this year. I've had people with cancer all over the world that I have to deal with this year. And, uh, and I don't resist, and I tell them not to resist. Learn from it. Let it teach you. Let the, the teach them what they have to do to change inside. Let it teach them how to get closer to God. How to stop, you know, drawing energy from other human beings and build a system inside that enables you to draw it from the source of all energy in the universe, which is not a friend, you know, your wife, your husband, your kids, your parents. So it's the same process, Brad. What does it have to teach me about me that I have to change? What does, you know, a marriage teach me about what I have to do to change? Having a relationship with another human being Teach, not trying to change them and make them live according to the way I think they're going to live. That's a lifetime of anguish. What do I have to learn from them to get big enough to be able to love them unconditionally? 
or arrive at a place where I don't need this anymore. They don't want to change. Okay, that's their life. I can walk away from it. Or how can they teach me how to get big enough in myself to love them unconditionally? I mean, it opens up many pathways. As long as you're right and you fight to prove you're right, there's, there's only one pathway. And that really will create some kind of a collision. Well, it has to do with physical illness. It has to do with addiction. It has to do with all kinds of problems that people have. Listen to them. Let them teach you what you need to do to grow, to get closer to God. Don't resent them. Don't be angry at them. They're there to teach you something. Thank you. I hope that's clear, you know. Welcome. You're all welcome. <laughs> Does anyone else have a question I would like to ask? And Bob, you don't have a question? What? What's going on today? <laughs> Okay, as you all must know, and I've said it a hundred times, uh, two Sundays, two weekends from now, I'm having a retreat here. Uh, there'll be no class on that Sunday. There'll be a lot of classes here, I promise you, my God. Yeah, it's pretty intense. There'll be another retreat in October. And if you'd like to attend, um, every two months, I'm going to have one. Just let myself or Jennifer know, and we'll put your name down on the list. I know it's expensive, but for God's sake, two people go out and have dinner today for 125 minutes. <laughs> what I do is really cheap. I had dinner last night. I looked at the menu and I said, "My God, I'm the cheapest. I'm the cheapest thing in in the world, practically." You know. <laughs> So if you'd like to come and you want to come in October, um, just let me know. Let Jennifer know. She'll put your name down. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? And I went and had dinner at a you know a restaurant, and there's a dish I always get in the restaurant. And it was really funny because they raised the price of the dish, but the dish got worse. <laughs> it wasn't as good as when it was cheaper. <laughs> I just cracked up. I said, you know, not that I was upset, it was a few dollars more, but it, it, it was much better when the thing was cheaper. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Okay, there are no more questions. There'll be meditation on Wednesday. And thank you. God bless you all. And thank you for being here, being in my life. You know, opening, working hard to get to God. It's just a miracle to be able to do this. When you think, seven times a week, I can sit here and do this. And I have, and believe me, I have no joy in sitting in front of a computer. It's not my favorite thing to do in the world, you know. 
but here with you all, it's like a miracle. And you never know how God serves us. You know, you never know. So thank you. And I'm looking forward to seeing everybody on Wednesday. God bless you. Thank you. Good night, Stuart. Thank you, uh, sir. You're welcome. Good night. Um,